we're in our message series. What's our message series, Brandon? The Power of Heaven. It's a real seeker-sensitive series here. We don't want to offend anybody. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I believe God is here today and He can change lives. If you come and encounter with Him, amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Had a, a time of testimony get together with... Uh, some leaders recently, and uh, we were just talking about all the miraculous things God has been doing in our midst, and all the amazing things God has been doing among us. I, uh, I'm humbled that God would even come in the room that I'm in. That's, uh, that's pretty exciting. At the same point, I'm uh, disappointed that God doesn't come in the room that I'm in. Uh, I expect Him to be present, amen? Yet I'm humbled every time He is. Uh, we've just seen amazing uh, miracles and finances and healings and, you know, <clears throat> we, we read the book, uh, which, you know, back in the day, they, they, the, the, the priests didn't want you to read the book. They, they were the ones who told you what the book said and uh, don't worry about the rest of the book. Just remember what I tell you about the book. And uh, we went ahead and read the book and the book said that he's alive. Amen. And, uh, <clears throat> and, uh. Even more than that, we met him. We met him. We found out that he's actually alive. The book is not, a, it's not fiction. It's actually a non-fiction book. And he's actually, come on, one class, we all clap. He's, uh, he is alive. And he said, I would send the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit has been here for 2,000 years. He never left. He didn't go to sleep. He was, his hand was not held back for a season. He didn't find out that the church didn't believe in him, so he went back home. He actually stayed. He actually believed that he's the truth. And he never retreated. And he's touching people today. And, uh, and I believe if you would extend your faith today, he'll touch you as well. As I'm extending my faith, that he'll touch me as well. So if I'm talking and then you see me disappear, it's because the presence of God has hit me and I'm on the ground. You have to learn how to drink on the job. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I want to talk today about the Spirit of God. and uh, <clears throat> The Holy Ghost is not some new, new concept that the, uh, that the Christians came up with. Holy Spirit wasn't invented in the, in the first century. He didn't, uh, God didn't create, He didn't split Himself again like some sort of zygote, you know? splitting himself into more parts in the first century. He, he always was, as you study the scriptures, you'll see he always was the triune God. And, uh, <clears throat> and all throughout the Old Covenant, we see what God wanted to do through us. In uh, Israel, they had three feasts of pilgrimage. Uh, it's a feast that they had to go to Jerusalem for every, every year. There was, there was three of them. Um, one was the, the Passover which is the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which they celebrated the, the deliverance uh, from Egypt. And there's uh, what we call Pentecost, which is the, the Feast of, of Weeks, and uh, it uh, celebrates the harvest. And uh, then there's Sukkot, which is the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles is found in uh, Leviticus chapter 23. Let me... If I could just very briefly read you a couple of verses out of Leviticus. We don't, we don't teach out of Leviticus a lot, but it's actually in the book. Leviticus chapter 23. And he talks, uh, the father talks to Israel about what they're supposed to do. Leviticus 23, starting in verse 42, he says, You shall live in booths for seven days. All the native born in Israel shall live in booths, so that your generations may know that I had the sons of Israel live in booths, when I brought them out from the land of Egypt, I am the Lord, your God. And, and this, this Feast of Booths uh, celebrated uh, uh, how the children of Israel wandered in, Israel, in, in the desert, and the Lord cared for them as they wandered through the desert. As, as they were in the dry and thirsty place, the Lord himself sustained them. And so they have this, fest, this feast every year. 
In this feast every year, they celebrate how the Lord sustained them in the desert. And it's an eight-day festival. And for the first seven days, there was sacrifices that were had, sacrifices later in the day and sacrifices early in the day. And uh, there was a regular, regular part of the sacrifice in the altar. There would be um, <clears throat> wine that was poured uh, in the altar. <clears throat> but during this, fest, during this feast, um, also water was brought as an offering. Uh, sometimes when you feast too much, you need a little water to dilute the wine that you've been f- having a festival with. And uh, I know that's not what this is. But So what would happen is every day they would get this uh, golden bowl and they would go down to the, the, the stream of Siloam and they would bring it up to the altar and the person would bring the, the, the offering of wine the same time the person would bring the offering of water and they would pour each into a silver bowl and the silver bowl would drain uh, behind the altar. That would happen for seven days and on the eighth day, it did not happen. So for seven days, it was this, as part of this celebration, there was this water that was brought from the pool of Siloam and uh, on the eighth day, there wasn't. And this is where we find Jesus on the great day of this festival or or the last day we find in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 7. If you have your copy of the Word of God, we're going to go ahead and read that. <clears throat> it says, now, verse 37. Now, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me. And drink. I I need you to see the boldness of Jesus here. For seven days they brought water to the altar. On the eighth day, there was no water. Jesus stood (laughs) saying, If anybody thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Verse 38, he who believes in me, as the scripture says, from his innermost being will come rivers of living water. Listen, Jesus called himself many things in the scriptures. He called himself the bread of life. Uh, he, He called himself the light of the world. He called himself the door, right? He, he said, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out from the pasture. He called himself the good shepherd. He called himself the resurrection and the life. He called him this, the way, the truth, and the life. He called himself the vine. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I am him, he, he bears much fruit, but we see something interesting in this scripture in John that he doesn't refer to himself at all. He said, if anybody is thirsty, come to me and let him drink. And he could have said, I am the rock that the fountain that Moses hit will come out of. He could have said that I am the water of life. He, he could have said, I am the eternal spring. But he stood and he didn't say that. He gave us a very unique promise. He said, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being. He who believes in me, from his innermost being, uh, will flow rivers of living water. Not stale water. Not dry water. Not, not religious water. Not... Not, not condemnation water, not, not fun activities in the parking lot water. Rivers of living water. And at Revival Life Church, we've decided we want the river. We want the river. You promised us a river. I want the river. I want the river. You promised it, Jesus. That wasn't my idea. It was yours. Rivers of living water. 
Ha. 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 We got one service today, so I got to give you double the anointing. We often have to split it in two. Today, you get the whole thing. Double the fun. Double the rainbow. Double the anointing. Double the angels. Double the presence. I am feeling good today. I'm going to have air conditioning all week. And I'm very happy about it. Ha! I want the river. I don't want parts of it. I don't want a trickling little drop, a drip. Drips are irritating. It's not enough to get wet. And it's too much noise to bathe in. You ever been on a mission trip and there's just a drip coming from the fountain? You're like, this is not the fountain that won't run dry. <laughs> Any moment now. I remember on a mission trip, the water ran out in the middle of us taking showers. And a certain young man was all lathered up. There was a pool at that mission trip. And he invented his own pool of Siloam to dip in. He went down and dipped seven times in that pool and came out clean. That was brave because I never did see the bottom of that pool. Been to that location four times. I've yet to see the bottom of that pool. That's not what we want. We don't, we don't, we don't want a dirty pool. We don't. We don't want stale religious water. We don't want, we don't want yesterday's bread. We, we, we don't want what religion has decided that God is no longer doing. Ha. Ha. People got an argument against everything God said. Oh, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came like a dove. People have heard more messages on the dove than on the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's not a bird. We're not ornithologists. We're not here to study birds. We're here to study the Holy Ghost of God. We're here to study His ways. We're to study the river. The river. I'm going to keep saying it until you get it. The river. Isaiah prophesied this day. Chapter 43, he said, Behold, I will do something new. For those of you who've been in Christianity a long time and you've seen it all and you felt it all and you twitched it all and you heard it all, I have a prophetic word for you. He'll do something new. Something new. Look for the new. He said, now it will spring forth. Yeah. Say now. now. Will you not be aware of it? It's not will he do it, it's will you be aware of it? Yeah. Will we be aware of what he is doing? Yeah. Not will he do it, will we be aware of it? Yeah. <clears throat> Remember my wife was in a prayer meeting one time at a certain women's group that was not named Revival Life Church. <clears throat> And this woman said, I want to believe that God still does miracles. I want to believe that he still heals. She didn't say, I, I want to see him heal or I want to see miracles. She's just praying that she would believe. And as the people got more fervent about wanting to believe, my wife was like, I don't, my wife got less and less fervent. She's like, I don't, I don't understand what we're praying for. God still does miracles. What do we, it's like asking to raise the living. Come on. We don't pray to raise the living. Come on. Come on. We pray to raise the dead. And too many people's faith is dead because he's not doing what he did in the 90s. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Will you be aware of it? Will you be aware of it? Huh. I'm getting my master's degree in a certain university that is in love with what God did 100 years ago. And I'm in love with what God's doing right now. 
And I keep having this debate with them in my papers. <laughs> Behold, he's doing a new thing. <laughs> Behold, <laughs> he's doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing. And they're like, no, no, no. It's clearly written here. The guy wrote it in 1904. I'm like, I'm not alive in 1904. I'm alive in 2019 and hopefully much farther than that. I don't want to study the old thing. I like what he did. I want to know what he's doing. Sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is pretty funny because there's joy breaking out right over here. And I pray that some people will learn to be happy Christians. If I could just kick it back, I would. To the back of the service. Even in the back, God moves. It will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers, in the desert. You know what it would look like if a river hit the desert? It says this, ro- this river will make a roadway in the wilderness. You ever seen when a flash flood hits a, hits a wooded area and it just carries everything with it? Have you been wrestling with God? God, can you help me stop this? Can you help me stop that? Lord, can I, can I go with you? What you need is the river. The river carries everything. You're like, I got this wall in front of me. You need the river. You know how much engineering it takes to stop a river? There's whole denominations built on that. We've <laughs> we've figured out how to stop the river. And we're going to teach it to you until you believe that the river is stopped. They got a world record dam built right where the river wants to flow. Let's just let the river flow, amen? Amen. When the river comes in your front door, it bursts out the back windows, carries out your furniture, carries out your excuses, carries out your vices. The river comes. I am, I'm feeling good today. I have no idea what the podcast is going to look like. I might look and I don't know later, but, but today I'm in the river. Are you in the river today? Come on, tell your neighbor, get in the river. You got to get in the river above your head. Above your head where it's carrying you. Jesus, that's when it gets fun. Gets fun when, gets fun when it floats along. It gets fun when it floats along. It gets fun when you get in over your head. Listen, listen, the river, it doesn't flow from here. It flows from here. You can't think your way into the river. You ever pray for someone to get baptized in the Holy Ghost and they go through this? He didn't say, you know, and, and thoughts fell on them on the day of Pentecost. Praying thoughts. You can't be scared. You can't be embarrassed and flow in the river. You got to stop caring what people think about you. You got to decide God gets to decide. Being a fool for Christ might actually look like something in your life. It might actually... Hallelujah. We got kids growing up in Pentecost in this house. I hope you're ready for them. I hope you don't get offended when we got all kids on the worship team and all kids up here speaking on Friday nights because they actually grew up and believed the book. (laughs) 
We're actually raising up a generation here. They prophesy something. Did it happen? Did it happen? Then go learn how to prophesy something that did happen. Come on. I, I, um, can they prophesy? That's what I care about. Can they prophesy? I don't care if they can throw a football. Look at my kid. He's got 14 billion followers on YouTube. Can he prophesy? Can't you declare the word of the Lord? Can she discern the times and seasons? We just got the first fruits now, just starting to just starting to come forth. When the revival that's happening, revival kids breaks up here. I mean, like, don't get offended. Don't get offended when we got 13-year-olds up here preaching. Don't, don't get offended. <clears throat> don't get offended. <clears throat> There's a river of God's flowing through them. Ezekiel said, it will come about that every living creature which swarms in every place where the river goes will live. He says, so everything will live in the next verse where the river goes. Do you have a place of death in your life? Are there places in your life that are not glorifying God? You see the river of God there. I feel it beginning to rise in the room. I feel we're somewhere around ankle deep right now. I'm feeling it. I feel it somewhere around ankle deep right now. I, um, <clears throat> I appreciate you not starting my timer today. That just lets me know I'm perpetually have more time. That's awesome. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just, just God told me the river of God is coming today. I'm pretty excited about it. Wherever the river goes, there's life. I don't know if you know this, but Boca Raton needs life. South Florida needs life. Your finances need life. 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 In life, there isn't sickness. There isn't depression. There isn't anxiety. There's not rejection. There's not an orphan spirit. There's not a, I got to sabotage my relationship because it's going too good, so I got to start a fight. Like, None of that is in life. None of that is in life. Amen. Somebody's happy. Everywhere the river goes, there's life. There's like a love that flows in the river of God. That is the actual motivator of, of, of God. It's love. <clears throat> it, that, let me say it again. That is the motivator of God. It's love. Amen. It's love. <clears throat> it's love. And so I keep having this, um, <clears throat> I keep having this eschatological difference of opinion. I keep having this soteriological difference of opinion. I keep, like, God did not save us because he didn't have anything else to use for his glory. He saved us because he loves us. He actually loves us. And he actually filled us with his spirit, not so we can tell other people that our loving God is going to come and squash them like bugs. It's not why he saved you. He saved you because he loves you. He filled you with his spirit so you can live in communion with him. And out of a loving relationship, we tell other people about this one that we love. Nothing worse than an angry evangelist. Don't you hate him, Mike? No, 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 that's not true. Angry prophets are worse. Because they, they actually try to speak for God. Most angry evangelists speak for themselves and condemn people. Angry prophets condemn people in the name of the Lord. That's a true story right there. But when a prophet gets touched with the love of God, sweet Jesus, whole, whole, whole regions open up to the love. When evangelists are touched with the love of God, people are just drawn to that life. You see, we get the river, it's for us and for others. That's why it's not just a well, this river of living water, because you're going to get more water than you need. Some people have a tiny little thimble, and they got a drop when they got saved, and they put the lid on it, and they've been hiding it ever since. And some people were lucky enough to get a cup and... 
I just want, an, I want a fountain that never runs dry. I want rivers that, that, that the lost can come and drink from. Something happens when this river gets on you. Something happens when you get carried by this river. All of a sudden, you get soaking wet. There's somebody having a good time back there. Amen? I think there's a river of sugar running back there. And the Revival Kids workers are like, oh, service should only be four more minutes. <laughs> Two services. <laughs> Something happens when you get carried away by the river of God. What happens is other people start to see it and, 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 and you don't have a dam anymore. It flows no matter what context you're in. Does, does, no matter what context you're in, the river flows. It's not I got a church thing. I go get my cup filled at church and I cup it and just hope it lasts me a week. And I go back to church on Sunday and get my cup filled. And you've realized, wait a minute, I don't need to get filled by, by Sarah's well. I actually have a well on the inside of me. And the more you drink from that well, the more it flows. And the more it flows, the more people that can drink from it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's a good word right there. And say, hand me that microphone. Chelsea, I would, I would, I'd ask Chelsea to come up and share something really quick. Woo! Woo! No, yeah. <clears throat> Chelsea preached recently in the burning room. Who was here? <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> I don't even know what to call what she did. She shared the river. And uh, you preached on, what scripture did you preach? It was Mark 16, 15. That's on, right? Mark 6 feet. And I asked her if she could share just part of her message this morning. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, good. <laughs> let's do it. The river. So our Bible says, and he said to them, who's them? Us. Us. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Who's he? He said, oh, who's he? Jesus, right? Jesus said to his followers, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, right? That's what your Bible says? Right, amen. So this river flows out of us, and we're able to preach the gospel to all creation. But where, what part of the world do, are we sent here in church, okay, yes, we preach the gospel in church, but we're all the world, so we live in this world, right, with the river that we come here to get, to get filled up with, to overflow with, the cup that we ask God to get the river from and overflow out into the world, we un uncap the lid and we go into the world, but where are we sent, and that's the question you got to ask yourself, where are we sent, where are we sent, well, I'll tell you where you're sent, just for example, when you're hungry and you need to go to the grocery store and your, food, your belly is telling you and sending you to the grocery store, yeah. you're being sent. Yeah. You're being sent. Yeah. Or, or when your bills looking high and you need to go to work and the bills are sending you to work, you're being sent. You're being sent. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to figure it out because the river flows out of you. The river flows out of you, and it's unstoppable if you uncap it. You got to uncap it. You got to be ready. It comes out of you. So recently, so recently I was sent to acting class with my daughters. And my daughter started acting class. It was the first acting class. And we're sitting there, so the kids go into one room, and the, and the parents stay in the lobby. So us parents were getting to know each other, and we're introducing each other, and what do we do? And so that was that. And then this lady walks in, and she's all anxious, and she's talking, and she's like, oh, oh. And she looks kind of, um, it, like, fragile, right? But she looks a little bit, like, um, like weird. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> and so she sits down, and she's, like, looking like this. And they're like, so, hey, our name, we introduce ourselves, and, she's, and we asked her, you know, what do you do? She goes, oh, I'm an astrologist. And, and one of the moms was like, oh, I was looking for an astrologist. And I was like... Like, 
And I'm like, no, you are not having these moms here. You are not having these moms. And, and, and so, you know, Jesus wants to take over a room. The river wants to take over a room wherever you're at. And so I'm a challenger, considered a challenger, and you want to be the most powerful in the room, but I decided that Jesus be the most powerful in the room. So Jesus was the most powerful in the room, and I felt like I could see the demon. I was like, you better back up in that corner right there. I don't know if you could hear my thoughts, but I was just like, Ugh, like, you better. And so, and so I was, you know, whatever. And so um, this astrologist was talking about how she is very sensitive. She's like, oh, I'm so sensitive. I'm, I'm so sensitive. And, and they start going around the room with their, your horoscopes. Like, what, what are you? What do you consider? And they come to me, and she, I was like, I'm a Christian. And, and, um, and she's like, oh, oh. And I was kind of, you know, I, I was trying to be a loving evangelist, but I was kind of getting irritated. But, but I do love people. I was getting irritated for something trying to take over these moms in the room. So... So um, she was saying, oh, well, she kept saying, I'm so sensitive, I'm so sensitive. And I just said, well, I'm really prophetic. Because I'm like, you can talk spiritual, and you're going to look weird. I'm trying to look normal, but I know spiritual stuff. And I'm like, thinking, I'm like, this lady's going to get paid. She looks weird. Her life is probably a mess. Like, why, you know, might as well lean into it, right? So, so, she, so she starts talking about this, and I said, hey, I got a testimony. You guys want to hear a testimony? The, li- the river of living water was about to come out. And so, um, so I was like, I can't believe I'm going to do this, but I felt it coming. So I was, like, I was like, so I was at Publix this morning. And you know, the Bible talks about spiritual gifts without repentance. But, so this is probably why you're spiritual, but I don't know. We're created to be spiritual. But the ministers of God or the followers of Jesus – I have spiritual gifts, and when you are a minister of God, you have spiritual gifts, and miracle signs and wonders follow. And the parents are like, okay, you know, and I was like, okay, to myself. <laughs> and so, and I was like, so I was walking in Publix, and I got a word of knowledge, which, you know, that's when you can feel someone's pain, and God wants to heal them. A loving father wants to heal them. So I walk into Publix, and I'm trying to figure out whose ear pain this is. So I get to the cashier, and I'm telling her this testimony. So this point is I'm telling her this testimony, and the mom's the testimony. And I ask the cashier, I'm like, do you have any pain? Or do you know if Je- did you know that Jesus loves you? And she's like, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that today, but thank you. I said, do you have any pain in your body? She's like, no. I was like, oh, wrong one. And so I said, you got to really humble yourself, but it's worth it. It's so worth it. So the lady next to me, I looked at her, and I was like, do you know um, Jesus loves you? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, do you have any pain in your body? She goes, oh, all over, all over. I'm like, specifically your ear. And she was like, um, she was like, well, and I'm like, ear pain right here. I, and I, you have to lean in and lean into that too because sometimes people are like, I don't know. So anyway, so she's like, yes, I have drainage problems in my ear, especially when it's raining, it hurts. And I was like, well, it's raining right now. Does it hurt? She's like, yes. I'm like, so can I pray for you? Can I touch you? She's like, no, I'm, I'm a witness. Or she, she told me she was a witness, so I'm like, you probably don't want me to touch you. And she's like, no, no, don't touch me. So I just prayed and I left. And so I'm telling the moms these things, and they're just still looking at me. And I was like, and you know what? Um, I've noticed psychics' lives are a pretty hot mess because I remember when a, I saw um, a psychic in the mall one day and she looked homeless, she had a baby, but she's sitting there asking to get money and to read, read for people. And I was sitting there in the mall and I was like, this is, here I am, I have the, the gospel of God, I have the power of God, and this lady's making money and she looks like her life is a mess, she's, and she's going to get money for it. I'm like, I'm not getting paid for this, like, and, I, and I have truth. So, so I went up to the psychic, and I told, you know, Jesus loves you. Can I pray for you? And the psychic said yes. And then I saw this lady again a couple weeks later, the same psychic, somewhere else. And I said, hey, you remember, remember me? Can I pray for you? And she's like, yes. So I prayed for her. Then I saw her later on again with weeks or months times, and I said, hey, do you remember me? Can I pray for you? And I lay hands on her. She's like, yes. So one day I was being sent to Chuck E. Cheese, and I was coming out of Chuck E. Cheese, and I had my Jesus Loves You shirt on, and I see this lady. I guess she recognized me. It was God. She, she recognized me. She was coming up to me. Courtney, you were there. I don't know if you remember. And so... She was with her son, and she, she, was, um, she came up to me, and she looked different. She looked refreshed. And she's like, guess what? I said, what? She goes, I gave my life to Jesus. I gave my life to Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and she says, I stopped being a psychic anymore. And she goes, I actually ministered to the homeless. Most likely she was homeless. Most likely she was homeless. 
So the lady, so literally, like, the river of God is just, like, kind of, like, un, like, breaking down this woman and her spiritual pride. Because um, then I start talking about psychics being, I'm a hairstylist, and psychics being in my chair, and their, their lives are hot messes. They end up crying out to Jesus. One lady had psychic stores from New Jersey to Boca, always on drugs. This man is making, her boyfriend is making money off of her, sounds like the Bible. And, and she's extremely abused or whatever. And I'm just saying, how can psychics' lives be such hot messes, but they can't tell what's going on in their own lives, but they're giving information to other people. Their life's a hot mess. So this astrologist starts crying. I'm not talking about like tearing, busted out crying in front of these moms. She's like, I never want to get married. I'm so scared of men. I'm going to go to this party, a very unclean party. And um, I don't know what to do. Just starts crying and crying and crying. And she goes, this is God. This is God. I didn't know why, but this is God. And so the river of God will do that. The river of God will come and it will flow and it will wash everything away. And people will come to life in Jesus' name. You'll see the river of God coming out of you. That's for you. That's for you. Go on and preach the gospel to all the world. Amen. The river of God. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, you only know if you have rivers of living water when you get around the dead. That's when you find out do you have the river or do you just have religion? Are the, are the, turn them down a little bit. Are the dead affected by my river? Are the dead affected by my river? The only way you know is you get your river around some dead people. Now you may not lead two psychics to Christ in the midst of a testimony of another psychic getting, I mean that may. <laughs> Jehovah Witnesses may not be getting saved in public in the middle of your testimony about winning a psychic to the Lord. <laughs> but it should look like something, Amen. Shaba, Shaba, you have to, mm, listen, I'm, 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 ha, huh, I'm bringing it in for a landing, I promise. Shaba, let me throw this to you, Corey. Shaba, okay, here we go. Hallelujah. My autocorrect recognizes Shaba now, I'm pretty happy about that. I just type in S-H and it says Shaba, I'm like, yes, Shaba. Even my phone knows the river of God is flowing. Even my phone recognizes. We need to walk with an awareness of the presence of God in our lives. Jesus walked with an awareness of the presence of God on his life. And with that awareness, the people around him could just come and drink. So a woman with the issue of blood, she just got near him and had got completely, absolutely healed. There's just a river. There's a river flowing on so many people in this house. The Bible says in Acts chapter 5, it says, And at the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were taking place among the people. Many signs and wonders. That's Acts 5.12. There you go. Come on, Brandon. Love you, man. It says, Many signs and wonders were taking place among the people. In verse 15, it says, To such an extent that they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and pallets so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow may fall on them. Now, I'm not trying to tell you how to get your loved one saved, but if they get their hair done, you may want to pay to have their hair done at Chelsea's salon. I'm not sure how to get my aunt saved or my wife saved or my well I know for a mere less than a hundred dollars a session they could sit under the river of living water in the atmosphere that psychics are getting saved in the atmosphere that drug addicts are getting saved you you want to you want to get these people where the river is they said I know where the river is I'm just going to sit in the street and let them walk by so I could get healed come on Come on, somebody. I'm, I mean, there's an awareness of the river. There's an awareness of the river. We get to 
walk in. In Acts 19, it says, God was performing. Here's what I want them to say about me. We, we're not just looking for miracles. I want some extraordinary miracles. <laughs> extraordinary miracles to come forth. Like, we had a miracle in our church. What was your miracle? A bunch of kids got their face painted. I'm like, that's awesome. I want some extraordinary miracles. I'm looking for extraordinary miracles. I'm talking toes popping on. I'm, I mean, I'm, I mean. Come on. I'm talking people in worship recognizing for the first time they can see through both eyes. I'm talking about extraordinary miracles. Like, we see fertility happening so much in this house. Listen, people show up here telling us they can't have kids, and we just start laughing. They're like, why are you laughing at my ailment? We're like, oh, it's not an ailment, it's healed. <laughs> it happens so often here. I'm waiting for Mike and Sue to have a baby. Extraordinary miracles. Extraordinary miracles. I'm even waiting for some of your marriages to get healed. Extraordinary miracles. <laughs> Enough money to pay your bills. Extraordinary miracles. Come on, stand with me if you would. It says, so that handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick. And this, watch this. It didn't say they were, it said diseases left them and evil spirits went out of them. Listen, they didn't cast out the devils. The devils are like the, the, the presence. I, I have to leave this one because the river has just come upon them. The river has just come upon them. Imagine what Thanksgiving dinner might look like with your family. When the river of God invades a room, they say, oh, you're the, you're the religious one. Why don't you go ahead and say grace? You said, why, thank you. Prepare for extraordinary miracles. Let us bow our head and pray. <laughs> ha. Extraordinary miracles. Ha, from the river of God, out of your belly, out of your belly shall come rivers, rivers. Put your hands on your belly right now and say, rivers. Come on, put it on your belly, say, rivers. Ha, and I command in the name of the, and I command in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I command in the name of the Lord Jesus. Ha, ha, come on, let it bubble up right now, come on. Listen, 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 listen. Let it bubble up. Listen, listen. You're going to have to, like, you have to actually do something. You have to actually open your mouth and make a sound. He's not going to do it for you. He won't do it in the midst of the fear. He won't do it in the midst of your worrying about your reputation. Well, what if I say something and it's me? Oh, well, you've been doing that your whole life. Why would that be a tragedy now? The moment you could actually speak in tongues, you decide not to talk at all. You've been talking the last 40 years, but at this moment, all of a sudden, you decide you need to not talk. It needs to be God. How about the next time you're angry, let it not be you talking and let it be God? How about in this moment, you start talking and allow the river to bubble up from the inside of you? Shake haba. Well, I tried it before. Well, how about you try it again? Shaba saraba. Maybe a spirit of prophecy is about to maybe a spirit of prophecy is about to bubble up from you and you might prophesy over your own self here. Turn him down to touch Brandon. I don't have to yell over him here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, are you are, are you is the river flowing? I'm I'm starting to feel it a little bit. I feel it's about ankle deep right now. Shaba. Shaba. Shaba, God's going to do two things here in the next five minutes that I know of. Even though I believe there's a healing anointing flowing even now. 
Corey, do me a second and clear some of this out, if you would. Do me a solid and clear some of that out. The Lord is going to do, Anastasia, move this stuff right here for me. Uh, the Lord's going to do two things right now that I know of. I need you to pray in the Holy Ghost. I feel like he's going to anoint some evangelists, first of all. might say, oh, well, that's just Chelsea. Chelsea will tell you that ain't Chelsea. And any evangelist who tells you it's them, it ain't, it ain't real evangelism. I feel the anointing is increasing right now. What do you think, Sarah? I think the anointing is increasing in the room. Turn them up a little bit here. Come on. Shabbat. He's going to anoint some evangelists. I feel that in my spirit. And uh, he's going to open some people's spiritual eyes to visions, to see spiritual things. That's, no, that's actually good. Why don't, you, why don't you clap for that? Corey said it on Friday. In unusual services, unusual things happen. When we get together, we need to do this on purpose more often, Sarah. We need to have one service just more often, just, just, just like once a quarter or something. And just shaba shaba everybody in the room at once. Are you ready? Pray in the Holy Ghost. And ask the Lord. Ask the Lord if He would increase your river right now. The river would flow out of you. Out of your bellies, rivers. Rivers of living water. Rivers. You promised us rivers, Jesus. You promised rivers. I want the river of God. Come on, you got to get desperate and thirsty. You got to get hungry and humble enough to say, I don't have all the river and I want it. I want it. I want the river of God. I want my family saved. I want my city saved. I want my promises fulfilled. Get hungry. Get hungry and desperate. Sheba ka taraba. Here it's, it's starting to bubble. It's starting to bubble. Come on. You got to get hungry. You got to get hungry. You got to get hungry. You got it. So right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. God is opening spiritual eyes right now. Spirit of revelation is in the room right now. There's a spirit of revelation in the room right now. Come on, there's a spirit of revelation in the room right now. Come on, there's an awareness. There's an awareness. There's an awareness of spiritual things right now. Shabbat. Sarah, I want you to stand right over there. Back a little bit and to the right. Yeah, right there. Yeah, release it. It's revelation in the room. Ha! Well, there's revelation in the room. Just give it a minute. You got to wait sometimes. Come on. Shaba, kaba, kaba, taba. Come on, there's revelation in the room. Lean into it. The Lord is showing you things right now. Lean into it. Some of you, your stomach is beginning to burn. He's increasing. He's increasing in the room right now. 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 Come on, he's increasing in the room right now. His presence. His presence. Fire! 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 Come on, let it flow. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Come on, let it flow. Out of your belly shall come rivers. Rivers of living water. Out of your belly. Deep cries out to deep rivers, 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 rivers. Rivers. Drink deep. All the way in the back of the room. Drink deep. Drink deep. 
fire is falling. The fire is falling. The fire is falling. I want every pregnant woman in the room to put your hand on your child and begin prophesying. Begin prophesying right now. I want every woman in the room who expects God to fill their womb, put your hand over your belly and begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. Every woman in the room, prophesy over your children to come. Some of you put your hand on your belly and it surprised you. If you're a man, it's because you did not listen to instructions. If you're a woman, it's because God has called you for more. 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 And I declare in this house, more prophets are being risen up. God is raising up more prophets. There's a spirit of revelation coming on. There's a spirit of revelation coming on some of you right now. The spirit of fire coming upon you right now. The Lord is taking the coal from the altar and he's touching your lips right now. You feel it. You feel it. It's burning on you right now. It's burning on you right now. It's burning on you right now. The fire from the altar is burning on you right now significantly. I want you to come forward quickly. If that's you and it's burning on you right now, I want you to come forward quickly. Don't wait. If you're hesitant, it's probably not you. Come quickly. There's a burning. There's a burning. Sarah's going to lay hands. Ah! When you see the fiery sword, lay hands. Line them up for me, ushers. There's a burning. I'm going to quickly pray for you. Then we're going to pray for the evangelist. Got it? Put your hands out. Do it. I ah, heard a funny story this week. A man was wondering what it was like for people who waited in the upper room nine days. Nine and a half days after Jesus had ascended. And they said, I have to go do laundry. I have to go use the toilet. And then on the 10th day, Pentecost came. Tarried for nine days, Mikey. Went home because their favorite TV show was coming on. Or they promised their uncle they would have lunch with them. Next time they come, there's people laid out in the streets speaking in new tongues. Sometimes you just, ha, some, sometimes, sometimes you just got to wait. Fire of God, burning fire. Stand up straight, Josh. Stand up straight. Stand up straight. Stand up straight. Fire of God. Fire of God is falling in the room. Ready, Josh? You ready, Josh? Fire of God! Take it, 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 take it. That's it. Fire of God! Come on, Mikey. Now you're releasing the river. Listen. Thank you, those who are in the front. If you can, if you're standing, if you go back to your seat, I would appreciate it. I'm going to pray for the evangelist now. I need everybody in this room everybody in this room to be in a state of prayer because God is about to anoint some evangelists right now. We're all called to evangelism, but God is about to anoint some. And there's a burning coming on your feet right now. There's a burning coming upon your ankles right now, those of you that God wants to anoint today. There is a burning coming. It's the fire of God, Mikey. Blessed are the feet of those who bring the gospel. There's a fire coming on your feet right now because the Lord is sending. The Lord, wow. 
There's a fire. Come on, come on, come on. Pray in the Holy Ghost. We need these people to get it. There's a fire even now, Mikey. There's a burning even now, Mikey. There's even a reactivation of the burning call to write the song to those who don't know him. And it's coming upon you even now, Mikey. The fire of God is descending, quickening the prophetic anointing, married with the psalmist anointing, married with the evangelistic anointing upon your life right now that confounds the wise. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Ha shabaka babasa babasa. Those of you, shankantarabakanta, fire of God. If you're standing at the front, you're able to go back to your seat. I would appreciate it if you would. This is a holy moment. God is going to anoint some people for evangelism. And that doesn't mean God's going to do the evangelism for you. You're going to take the opportunity. You're going to use the anointing and allow the river of God to flow through you. Listen, you have to start being bold this weekend. When Elisha picked up the mantle from Elijah, the first thing he did was strike the water to see if he got the anointing. When God anoints you, you have to strike the water to see if it fell on you or not. You have to begin operating in it immediately. Or that thing will lift. Shabbat. Vivi, the Lord is calling you. He's calling you, Vivi. He's called you to be set apart. You've been hearing it in your heart. You've been feeling it in your spirit. God does miracles. He even will call a Canes fan. It is amazing. He is the God of wonders. But you felt the drawing. You felt the calling. And the Lord has brought you to a crossroad. Who you were and who you're called to be cannot be married together. There's a coming out and going into. The fire of God is on you. Never the same again. Never the same again. I just see people gathering around you saying, what happened to the old you? What happened? We liked that person. You said they're dead. And I'm now alive in Christ Jesus. And I have a river. And all those who come to the river and drink will experience life. Listen, I don't know what's happening to the air conditioning today or the fire really is falling, but I tell you what, it's burning in here. Now I'm going to pray for the evangelist, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would increase that anointing. That you would increase mm, that you would increase the anointing right now. That you would increase the call. That you would increase the burden right now. Come on, some of your feet are getting uncomfortably like you're starting to feel that they're getting uncomfortable. They're getting uncomfortably hot. They're getting uncomfortably painful. That is the Lord. That is the Lord. The anointing of God will cause you to move. It causes you to move. The anointing of God. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost, people. There's some people who need this. The anointing of God. The anointing. Chelsea, come on up here. The anointing of God. Stand right where Sarah was standing. Shaba. Hey! Right over there. Right where them crumbs are. Right over to the right. Back. Oh, back one more. Back a little bit more. One more step. Fire! Mm, yeah, right there. Come on. When I count to three, do not wait. Some of you, the devil's been holding back your anointing so long. Let me say it again. Some of you, the devil's been holding you back from your call so long. Today, I want want you to see yourself run out of that. Run out of who you were. Run into the anointing. Run into the call. Run into the power. Run into the river. On the count of three, come on, pray in the spirit, believers. Come on, pray for them. The Lord told me I'm awakening old things. I'm awakening old things, Mikey. I'm awakening old things, Sarah. 
I'm awakening old things. There's burning on your feet right now. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to run forward. One, two, three. Come now and do not wait. Come forward right now. Do not wait. The fire of God is on your feet. Come to the front now. Come on, run now. Do not wait. Come now. Do not wait. Come now. Do not wait. Come now. Do not wait. Fire. Ah! People being called today, Chelsea. There's people being called today, Chelsea. People being called today, Chelsea. Come on, come on. Pray in the Holy Ghost and stretch your hands. People go pray for him, Chelsea. Release it. Release that. Hold out your hands. Let me see your hands. Release it. Release the fire of God upon them. And I believe the Lord is calling some people to pastoral ministry. And it's not what you wanted to be called, but you've already begun to feel a fire running down your back. There's a fire running down your back right now. And your heart is beginning to break. Just release it, Chelsea. You don't have to pray it into them. Just release it. Fire of God! Fire of God! Watch when you see the angel and you touch it. There's people even now that this pastoral anointing is running down your back. Pastor Trace, I want you to stand right over there. Keep it together. Keep it together. Someone else has to do the, the cloth thingies. Back up a little bit. Back up a little bit more. Back up a little bit more. Toward the wall. Back up. Right. Yeah, right. Right foot. Yeah, right there. Ah, yeah, right there. Fire of God! Fire of God! Listen, that's one. Fire of God! Fire of God! Rivers! 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 Now, if you're over the front, if you're able to step back, those of you who have this burning running down your spine, that's right down your back. There's a fire running down your back. I believe God is calling some people to pastoral care, pastoral ministry. That's you. I'd like you. To, uh, it's it's kind of painful. So I want you to come forward now, so we can pray for you. Come forward and line up. Come on and line up. Line up. Line up. Line up. Line up. If you would. Line up. Help me out, ushers. Line up. The Lord is going to anoint some of you right now. Look, if the Lord did not call you to one of these three today, it does not mean you're not called to that. But I want to challenge you if you feel called to one of those things. I want you to begin to drink deep of the river in this house. Pastor Tracy, come on over here. And finally, let me see your hands. God, fire of God, put your hand on her shoulder if you would please, fire of God, fire of God, it's not a counseling session, just lay hands, come on, these pastors, you get them in the room, fire of God, fire of God, Fire of God. Fire of Fire. Fire of God. Listen, as soon as we're done with that, we're gonna pray for everybody who wants hands laid on. Of course, he's gonna, if he's able to, gonna come bless you. We're gonna lay hands on everybody who just wants more of the river. We're gonna lay hands on everybody. Everybody wants more of the river. Fire! I don't know if you noticed this, but the prophets look like they had drop kicked. The evangelist just got a pastor just kind of standing there feeling good. It's not a soaking session.
Ha. Now, if you came up, wow. Pastor Tracy. Now, listen, if you came up for the pastoral call thing, and come on up here, Corey, and you're able to go back to your seat, I'd appreciate that. But I want to lay hands on everybody who wants to get laid hands on. Just wants more of the river of God. I'm going to be here at the front. Corey's going to tell you what to do. Listen, stand with me if you would as we bless you. We love you. Go be salt and light to your neighbors. I don't know. I'll just keep talking. Go ahead, Corey. Can we, get, can we give it up for the word this morning and what God's doing? Um, before, before I dismiss you guys, I just, just want to say that we love you. We're praying for you these next several days as the storm storm turns and goes out to sea. We're still praying for peace and that the the Lord would fill your homes and and be with you. Amen. As you do what you need to do. Um, But I want to encourage you guys as you go out. We've made a decision as a house and as the leadership that we're going with the Holy Ghost. That we're going with the Holy Ghost. And um, as I send you out today, I'm going to send you out. You're going with the Holy Ghost. You're going with the Holy Ghost. You're going carrying the river of God today. Amen. Amen. So, Father, I just thank you for these under the sound of my voice. I just bless them. I thank you for the gift and the call in their life. And I just pray that they would go with the river, that they would go this week and look for a place that they can release the river of God, that they can release Holy Spirit, where they can where they can release the blessing that you've poured out in their life onto someone else's life, Jesus. Father, I pray that the grace would flow from this altar and and that river would flow from this altar and increase as your people go into the city. In Jesus' name, we say, do it, do it, do it. We want more. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Give a shout to God one more time. Have an amazing Sunday. We love you guys. Come on, go be salt and light. Bless somebody as you leave, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. Thank you so much.